Good Sunday morning to you all and welcome back to God's Garden. I'm Deborah Schneider, your retreat host for this weekend and presenter for our fourth and final reflection. We are all in all in God. Before we get into our reflection, I think it's appropriate on this day, October 4, when we historically celebrate the life of St. Francis, that we begin with prayer. The prayer that we will say this morning has often been attributed to St. Francis. Hopefully you will find it familiar. Let's take a moment right now to be open and still so that we may recognize the presence of God with us here and now. Lord God, creator, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. On Friday evening, Father John introduced us to St. Francis's stories about the leper and the sultan. And it made me think. Many things today are the same today as they were 700, 1,000, 2,000 years ago, like fear of the other. St. Francis avoided the leper because he was afraid. He, he was afraid of what would happen if he came close to that leper. We still avoid people in need and people who are not like us. The Europeans at war with the Sultan, they were at war because of belief, because these people were a different race. They were from a different country. How often do we choose to be at war with our sisters and brothers because we don't understand them? We aren't willing to sit down and listen or reconcile. The time has changed but is humankind. Are we any closer to the simple but awesomely difficult quest to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and to love our neighbors as ourselves? And what does that really mean? A couple of thousand years ago, who was our neighbor? The population was smaller. The footprint was smaller. Our resource usage was smaller. Who did we call our neighbor? It was maybe our family, our tribe, our community. Maybe it was our village or perhaps the village down the road. But in the world we live in today, we stretch across every inhabitable quadrant of the earth. We know so much more about the vast number of neighbors who inhabit this creation we call earth. And through digital news and images, we see their faces, their families, who they are, how they live, their joys, their challenges, and sometimes the horrors that they face. We can't miss them unless we are not paying attention. And at the rate at which we are consuming resources, as Joe said last night, here in the US, it's equating to an average of 102 tons per person that we're throwing away. That's the equivalent of resource use that is four and a half planets that we are using just here in the United States. Recently, I've read an article about animal populations reducing 70% in the last 50 years. What they said in the article was that it signaled a fundamentally broken relationship between humans and the natural world. And as Pope Francis has said, our sister Mother Earth cries out to us because of the harm we have inflicted on her by our irresponsible use and abuse of the goods with which God has endowed her. We are seeing her cry out in the intensity of the climate events that are costing lives, homes, and livelihoods. 
And here's the thing. I can do here in the United States what half the people of this world in poverty can't do. And that is buy my way out of a disaster. There are 3.4 billion people living in poverty around the globe. And those people who are living in poverty make their living from the earth. They are subsistence farmers and fisher people. So things like sea level changes, drought that causes desertification, increased rain levels and events, fires, they don't have things like crop insurance, flood insurance, FEMA is not going to bail them out. There aren't security forces that are going to rush to their assistance. When they lose their livelihoods, they lose their ability to support themselves and their families. And it may even cause them to be faced with the decision to migrate to sustain their lives and that of their families. But the fact remains that God has given us just one home, one support system for human life. That support system must be shared by all and not just in this place and time. We measure our time by the turning of the earth, but reality is we are sharing this earth with billions of people who came before us and who will come after us. And that makes me wonder, if God knew me before I was born, why did God put me here on this planet in this place and time? When I see the situations of others across this earth, I think if I was born in another place bereft of resources like food, water, and shelter, or in a place of war, I would probably not still be here. Did God put me here in the United States because God loves me more than my other human sisters and brothers? I think not. That's not what scripture tells me. So knowing what we know, we need to ask, what did Jesus mean when he reiterated the covenantal language in the Gospel of John to his disciples as he was going to the cross? If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Meaning God's joy, our joy is rooted in community with one another. I think we feel that love in the context of our families, in our communities, in the context of serving one another, and definitely in the context of this pandemic. Most everyone that I talk to is mourning the loss of relationship with their communities that make them feel whole and bring them to joy. If we are to love one another as God has loved us, then we need to look at all people through the eyes of God. As creator of us all, father and mother of us all, in a way that is expansive, merciful, compassionate, and from the heart. We have a gift that no other generation before us has had, an image of our home from space hanging in the nothingness of cosmos. When I look at this image, what strikes me is its awesome beauty. And when I look at this image, I can't help but recognize the awesome greatness and wisdom of God. That blanket of haze that you see wrapping around the planet is part of the thin biosphere that supports all life on this planet. From the depth of the oceans to the sky, the, that biosphere that supports our life is just 12 miles deep. That's less than half a marathon. It's a self-contained and balanced system placed here by God for the purpose of sustaining all creatures, including us on this planet. It's been shared by all, generations past. It's being shared by us here now, 
and it is to be shared with all generations to come. The atmosphere contains the oxygen that sustains our life, the air that is breathed by everyone. There are no barriers or demarcations. The ash from the fires burning in the western part of the United States becomes our ash. And in fact, in the last couple of weeks, there's been days where I've stepped out in the morning and I could smell that smoke in the air. The water on this planet is the same water that has been here from creation. As one scientist put it, we could all be drinking dinosaur pee. What we do with that water not only affects us, it affects our neighbors here and around the world, and it affects the water of generations to come. What I don't see in this image are the human lines marking off our space that we've drawn on the globe. What I do know is that each of us is here only for a relatively short time as a guest of the creator. Do I really own any of this? What can I really claim that isn't gift? Or am I just another squatter blessed to be here for a time before I move on? The creatures placed here revolve in an endless cycle of life. The resources placed here by God support that life. We are made to be on this planet and God made this planet for us. It is no chance that we find peace, beauty, enjoyment, and awe in every aspect of this planet. From the tranquility of trees to the color of the flowers, the refreshment of water, the beauty of a sunset, the miracle of the plants that grow from tiny seeds, enjoyment in the food that sustains our bodies, even in the artistry of decay and in the tiny breath of a newborn child. Like St. Francis, we need to do, all we need to do is take the time to look around us to see the love and the greatness of God in this awesome gift of creation that has been given to all of humankind. In Laudato Si, Pope Francis minces no words when he says, how we see the world and how we see creation affects the choices that determine our behavior. If we approach nature and the environment without a sense of awe, wonder, and gift, we lose the ability to see ourselves in communal relationship with the world. And when we lose that ability to see, our attitude will be that of masters, consumers, and ruthless exploiters, unable to set limits on our immediate needs. So let's just stop for a minute and pause and imagine. Let's imagine how God sees our situation here on earth. What about the boundaries we've created? The barns we've built to store up our goods. The dissemination of God's creatures, large and small. Have we used the gifts of air, water, and resources that support life? on this planet, how have we done with that? How we are sharing the gift of creation among our sisters and brothers, both now and in the future, is God's love for me any more or less than any other person who is here now has come before me or will come after me, that I should feel justified in making more or taking more than my fair share. And what about loving my neighbor? We need to see that we are integrally connected, not only with God, but with creation and each other. We are all in awe. Pope Francis wrote this in Laudato Si, he wrote, everything in the world is connected. 
concern for the environment thus needs to be joined to a sincere love for our fellow human beings and an unwavering commitment to resolving the problems of society. As children of God, as sisters and brothers, we must move to a place of reconciliation. We need to recognize where we've shown disrespect to God. We need to recognize the damage we have done and are doing to creation and by connection to our brothers and sisters who we share this planet with. And like St. Francis, we have a choice. We can walk past the leper laying on the other side of the road, pretending we don't see, or we can choose to love. So what can we do to be more loving and caring? How can what I do affect someone living in another city or on the other side of the planet? The answer is a lot. We can start by paying attention to the wisdom of God and remembering how life was meant to be perpetuated in God's creation. So just give me a moment while I pause. Yes, I have a chicken. My simple example is a chicken. Given we let her be a chicken, as she was intended to be by God, in her natural state of being a chicken. She scratches around, she eats grass, green things, and bugs. She especially likes to eat Japanese beetles and squash bugs. And I like that about her. She's made of carbon and water and other elements. She poops. Her poop is the process result of what she eats. That poop adds nutrients to the soil that grows the grass, that provides the habitat for the bugs that she and her sister chickens will eat to grow and reproduce and lay the eggs that provide us food. That poop becomes the compost that feeds the garden, that feeds us, and once again feeds her as she scratches around, eats grass, green things, and more bugs, and poops again. One day, like us, she will go back to the earth and another chicken will be born. Excuse me while I set her down. This cycle of being is just one small example of God's wisdom that sustains us. In elementary school, we learned this as the carbon cycle. There are other cycles we learned about like the water cycle, the nitrogen cycle, photosynthesis, which recycles carbon dioxide back into oxygen. This is God's plan for the perpetuation of life on this planet, and it is good. The problem is not that we are using the gifts of creation. They were put here as a gift for us to use. We need these gifts to survive. That's part of the plan. The problem lies in how we are using these gifts and how much we are using. In short, taking, making, using, and throwing away in abundance is not following the creation wisdom of God. This is what Catherine was referring to yesterday morning when she said, we are to be co-creators with God. When we do follow the wisdom of God's plan and work within the cycles of nature, not using what we don't ultimately need, we co-create with God. When we don't live our ultimate focus on God, as Joe said last night, we live a disordered life, one that sees creation reverting back into chaos. Is this the chaos that God formed the earth out of as described in the first creation story of Genesis? Is this the chaos we are experiencing today as climate events intensify? We need to remember well, what we need to remember is that we are all integrally connected in this web of life. I am connected to that chicken I was holding. She is connected to me. We have the God-given wisdom, ingenuity, and ability to follow God's plan. That is what science is, figuring out how God's creation works. Our choice lies in following that plan. A question we should each ask ourselves daily is my ultimate concern today about me, my consumption, what I can use and what is most convenient for me? Or am I following a life that leads to simplicity, loving God, 
with all my heart and all my soul and my neighbor as myself. You matter, your neighbors matter, and what you do matters. To get started or, conti or to continue on your journey towards simplicity, we've posted numerous resources on the retreat page. We encourage you to look at them and discern what one simple thing you can do. When you've grasped that, pick another. Do that and share what you have learned with others. In closing, if we are to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves, we need to reset our focus. Then like St. Francis, we can see God and gift in all creation. We can create a better, more sustainable and simpler life where we can more fully love God with all our hearts, with all our minds, and love our neighbors as ourselves, both now and for generations to come, so that God's joy may be complete in us. Once again, following this reflection, we invite you to engage in the Going Deeper questions for reflection and journaling. These questions are listed below Reflection 4 on the timeline of the retreat booklet. And as our weekend together comes to an end, we encourage you to contemplatively close out your retreat experience today using the Saturday and Sunday afternoon prayer options. And at the close of your day, the closing prayer, a prayer for our earth from Laudato Si. Links to these prayers can be found on the retreat timeline under the listings for Sunday. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your journey God's peace and blessings on you all.